Citizens of Idaho and honored guests, good afternoon and welcome to the State of Idaho's 48th inaugural ceremony. I'm Brigadier General Michael Garshak, the Adjutant General for Idaho and Commander of the Idaho National Guard. It is my honor to serve as your Master of Ceremony for today's events. At this time, please silence all electronic devices. It is now my pleasure to introduce your elected officials. The Superintendent of Public Instruction, the Honorable Sherry Ibarra, and her husband, Matthew Ibarra Sr. The State Controller, the Honorable Brandon D. Wolf and his wife, Jana Lee. The State Treasurer, the Honorable Julie A. Ellsworth and her husband, Maurice Ellsworth. <laughs> the Attorney General, the Honorable Lawrence G. Wasden and his wife, Tracy. The Secretary of State, the Honorable Lawrence E. Denny, and, and his wife, Donna. The Lieutenant Governor, the Honorable Janice McGeehan, and her husband, James McGeehan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the governor of the great state of Idaho, the Honorable Brad Little and his wife, Teresa. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our following special guests. The United States Senator, the Honorable James E. Risch, and his wife, Vicki. Please be seated. Representing Senator Crapo is Mr. John Haney. Senator President Pro Tem of Idaho, the Honorable Brent Hill and his wife, Julianne. <laughs> Senate Majority Leader, the Honorable Chuck Winder and his wife, Diane. <laughs> and all other members of the Idaho Senate. Speaker of the House of Representatives of Idaho, the Honorable Scott Bedke, and his wife, Sarah. <laughs> H 
House of Representatives Minority Leader, the Honorable Matt Erpeldine. And all other members of the Idaho House of Representatives. We are also privileged to have four former governors and their wives with us today. The 29th Governor of Idaho, the Honorable Philip E. Batt, and his wife, Francie. The 30th Governor of Idaho, the Honorable Dirk Kempthorne and his wife, Patricia. The 31st Governor of Idaho, the Honorable James E. Risch and his wife, Vicki. And the 32nd Governor of Idaho, the Honorable C.L. Butch Otter and his wife, Lori. Also with us today are members of the Idaho Supreme Court, the Honorable Chief Justice Roger S. Burdick and Honorable Justices Robin Brody, Richard Bevin, John Stegner, and Greg Moeller. We welcome the members of the Idaho Court of Appeals, the Honorable Chief Judge David Gratton and Honorable Judges Molly Husky Jessica Lorello, and Amanda Brailsford. Also with us today, representing the Shoshone-Bannock Tribe, Vice Chairman Lad Edmo, and Public Affairs Manager, Randy L. Teton. Representing the Nez Perce Tribe are Chairman Shannon Wheeler and Mrs. Kim Williams. and Consul from Mexico, Mr. Rene David Mejia Quintana. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of our national and state colors by the Idaho National Guard Joint Color Guard. Singing the national anthem will be Mrs. Patty Sign. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance led by Senator Brent Hill an invocation offered by Reverend Gretchen Downer. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Order. Oh. Present. Oh. Please join me as we pledge allegiance to our flag and country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order!
Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we ask for your blessing on all the people gathered here this afternoon. We earnestly ask your blessing on the dedicated men and women who will serve elected and appointed positions for the state of Idaho in the days to come. May they feel the power of your Holy Spirit, its wisdom, its justice, its charity, its love. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve the people of Idaho. Help them broaden their vision as they look to the future of our state. May the welfare and well-being of every citizen be their constant concern. Help them work for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being, that divisions may be healed and peace will prevail. Be constantly with your servant Brad as he assumes the responsibility of leadership that he may faithfully exemplify the spiritual gifts of wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, and reverence in the exercise of his duties. Lord, we ask that we in Idaho may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to others in our nation and in the world. We thank you for our beautiful state, for our families, friends, and our neighbors, and the many blessings of our lives. All this we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and alleluia. Please be seated. It is now my pleasure to present the Honorable Roger S. Burdick, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the State of Idaho. Chief Justice Burdick will administer the oath of office to the elected officials. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce the Honorable Sherry A. Ibarra and her husband, Matthew, who will sponsor her for the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction. No, yes, go ahead. Chief Justice Burdick, I have the privilege of presenting the Honorable Sherry A. Ibarra, who having been duly elected and qualified is ready to receive the oath of office as Superintendent of Public Instruction for the State of Idaho. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and I will support the Constitution of the State of Idaho. And I will support the Constitution of the State of Idaho. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of And I will faithfully discharge the duties of Superintendent of Public Instruction. Superintendent of Public Instruction. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce the Honorable Lawrence G. Wasden and his wife Tracy, and his parents Jack and Karma Wasden, who will sponsor him for the Office of Attorney General.
Chief Justice Burdick, I have the privilege of presenting the Honorable Lawrence G. Wasden. A man of integrity and courage, who having been duly elected and qualified, is ready to receive the oath of office as Attorney General for the state of Idaho. Solemnly swear, I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Idaho. And the Constitution of the State of Idaho. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of. Attorney General for the State of Idaho. Attorney General for the State of Idaho. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you very much. Nice to see you, Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce the Honorable Julie Ellsworth and her husband Maurice, who will sponsor her for the Office of State Treasurer. Chief Justice Burnick, I have the privilege of presenting the Honorable Julie Ellsworth, who having been duly qualified, duly elected and qualified, is ready to receive the oath of office as State Treasurer for the State of Idaho. Repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Uh, and the Constitution of the State of Idaho. And the Constitution of the State of Idaho. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of. State Treasurer of the State of Idaho. State Treasurer of the State of Idaho. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce the Honorable Brandon D. Wolf and his wife, Jana Lee, who will sponsor him for the Office of State Controller. Chief Justice Burdick, I have the privilege of presenting the Honorable Brandon D. Wolf, who having been full, duly elected and qualified, is ready to receive the oath of office as State Controller for the State of Idaho. <laughs> Could you repeat after me? I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Idaho. And the Constitution of the State of Idaho. That I will faithfully discharge the duties of. That I will faithfully uh, that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office. <laughs> state controller of the State of Idaho. State controller of the State of Idaho. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Nicely done. Thank you. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce the Honorable Lawrence Denny, his wife Donna, and daughter Jennifer Eulencott, who will sponsor him for the Office of Secretary of State. Chief Justice Burdick, I have the privilege of presenting to you the Honorable Lawrence E. Denny, who, having been duly elected and qualified, is ready to receive the oath of office as a Secretary of State for the State of Idaho. I 
do solemnly swear. I, Lawrence Denny, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Idaho. And the Constitution of the State of Idaho. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of Secretary of State for the State of Idaho. Secretary of State for the State of Idaho. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help you God. So help me God. Thank you very much. Lawrence, get a keepsake from the court. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce the Honorable Janice McGeehan and her husband James McGeehan, who will sponsor her for the Office of Lieutenant Governor. Chief Justice Burdick, I have the privilege of presenting the Honorable Janice K. McGeehan, who has been duly elected and qualified and is ready to receive the oath of the office for Lieutenant Governor for the State of Idaho. Repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I, Janice McGeehan, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Idaho. And the Constitution of the State of Idaho. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of. Lieutenant Governor for the State of Idaho. Lieutenant Governor for the State of Idaho. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Nicely done. There you go. Thanks so much and welcome. welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my privilege to introduce the Honorable Brad Little, his wife Teresa Little, and their sons David and Adam Little, who will sponsor him for the office of Governor of the State of Idaho. Chief Justice Burdick, we have the privilege of presenting the Honorable Brad Little, who have been duly elected and qualified, is ready to receive the oath of office as governor for the state of Idaho. Repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I, Brad Little, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And I will support the Constitution of the State of Idaho. And the Constitution of the State of Idaho. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of. The Governor of the State of Idaho. The Office of the Governor of the State of Idaho. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help you God. So help you God. Yes, right. Here you go, Brad. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my distinct pleasure to present the 33rd Governor of the Great State of Idaho, the Honorable Brad Little and First Lady Teresa Little. Please stand and remain standing for honor, honors to the Governor of Idaho and Commander-in-Chief of the Idaho National Guard.
Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my privilege to introduce the First Lady of Idaho, Mrs. Teresa Lippitt. Thank you, General Garshak. Deep appreciation and heartfelt thanks to the honorable and brave men and women of the Idaho National Guard for this inspirational and excellent Idaho inaugural celebration weekend. This moment will become part of Idaho's history. Time moves us all forward. We will not be in this same space again. We feel sincere, simple gratitude to be able to share this moment with you. We are missing Brad's parents, Jerry and David, today. We are missing my mother, Erlene. We are so fortunate they were in our lives. They remain influential forces. We are delighted my father, Phil Solon and Adelia join us on the dais. We are happy Brad's sister Judy is here. Brad's sister brother is here. Brad's brother Jim is here as well. <laughs> Many other dearly beloved family members join us as well. Our earliest ancestors to arrive in Idaho came in 1877 while Idaho was still a territory. They traveled to Moscow by covered wagon. They came to homestead and farm. 142 years later, my cousin, Ken Clyde, who is with us today, continues to farm the original homestead. His brother Scott, also present, lives in the home on the original home site. My grandmother Clyde's father, Daniel Gamble, arrived in 1880 as a Presbyterian missionary. He traveled by steamboat from San Francisco to the mouth of the Columbia River, riverboat to Walla Walla, where he procured a horse to complete the journey to Moscow. William McConnell, met Gamble in Lewiston to ride with him up the hill. McConnell would later become Idaho's third governor. The population of Idaho in 1880 at the second census showed 32,619 people. Brad's maternal grandfather, James Laidlaw, emigrated from Scotland at the age of 23 in 1892. He traveled by rail to Kelton, Utah, where he caught a stagecoach to Malta in Casha County to herd sheep. Brad's paternal grandfather, Andy Little, was 24 in 1894 when he arrived by train to Caldwell after ship's passage from Glasgow, Scotland. He and his border collies walked 20 miles to the Aikman Ranch near Emmett to seek work herding sheep. These ancestors, plus the Solons, Johnsons, and others I have not mentioned, came to Idaho to create a better life for themselves, their families, and their descendants. Countless other individuals and families did the same. They worked tirelessly and through some very rough years to do so. They were vital forces in building our communities. Their life stories are woven into the very fabric of our state and our country. Their lives of hard work, courage, raw determination, resilience, duty, 
hopefulness and faith brought us to where we are today. We are ever grateful for them. Brad and I are also ever grateful for our sons, Adam and David, our daughters-in-law, Angela and Kelsey, and our grandchildren, Henry, Dylan, Jack, Jay, and Josephine. They fill our lives with purpose, meaning, and love every single day. Your ancestors may be indigenous to this beautiful land, or you yourself may have just arrived. Our family is happy, honored, and humbled to join hands with each and every Idahoan as we step into this brand new year with a new governor. Brad has been watching and learning from Idahoans his entire life. His experience, his work ethic, his knowledge, his passion, his energy, and perhaps his graying hair have burnished him for this position. I am proud to introduce my husband to you, Brad Little. Thank you. Teresa, Adam and David, our family, my fellow constitutional officers, Mr. Speaker, pro tem, honored legislators, Mr. Chief Justice, members of the judiciary, our National Guard men and women who have served and sacrificed for Idaho and our country, thank you very much. And you have solved the goose problem here on campus, so we appreciate that. So. <clears throat> my fellow Idahoans, it's an honor to join my friends, all of Idaho's living former chief executives. Governor Bath, I had a truck in the snow for my inaugural, unlike yours. Congratulations on the Medal of Achievement that Governor Otter gave you yesterday. Your decency and fiscal conservatism changed our state forever. <laughs> Governor Kempthorne, who laid the foundation for our state's efforts on our children and improving the state transportation system. Thank you. Governor Risch, who in seven months completed a full term's worth of work, creating Idaho's own roadless rule, a model for our efforts on public land management today. And my immediate predecessor, Governor Otter, who served Idaho for over 40 years with distinction. I will always view him as a great judge of talent. History will record my friend as a steadfast leader who led us through momentous economic challenges to become the fastest growing state with historic rates of employment. Today, on behalf of all Idahoans, we say thank you, Governor Otter, and well done. Each Idaho governor and legislator has had a hand in putting us where we are today. That's why Idaho is a leader in fiscal responsibility and the preferred home of many of all Idahoans and many new residents that just moved to our state. They are why we committed to grow our investments in education. And they are why personal income growth is the fastest in the country. 
As leaders, we know that the most important ingredient for Idaho's success has always been our people. From our pioneers to the present, Idaho was built on our shared values of hard work, independence, persistence, and commitment to family. For generations, Idahoans have faced the challenges of living in the western frontier and forged a better future for future generations. Our ancestors struggled against innumerable challenges and overcame them. Where there were new, no roads or schools, they built them. Where Idaho's natural wonders were threatened, they protected our precious public lands. Where they lacked energy, they built hydroelectric dams. Where the land was dry, they built the most sophisticated irrigation system in the world. Idaho pioneers did the hard work and made the hard decisions to create opportunities for their families and those of us who followed. Growing up, Teresa and I were taught the importance of participating and serving in our communities. Mom and Teresa's dad were on the hospital board for years. My dad served in the state senate and our parents served on local school boards. They always stressed the importance of education. In a fast-moving world, a robust education is imperative to compete. We must keep cultivating the skills of our citizens as we progress from a historically agrarian society to a modern information-driven economy. Our state's commitment to education goes back to the Constitution. Since statehood, every Idaho child has been promised a uniform, thorough, and free public education. And each generation has worked to better fulfill this constitutional responsibility, but more importantly, our moral obligation we have to our children. Our family have lived this. Our parents, Teresa and I, our kids are all educated in Idaho public schools and universities. Our grandchildren love their schools and teachers, even though today they might be missing class. As governor, I will work to live up the promise we made at statehood. It's what generations of Idahoans have done for us. Our children and grandchildren deserve no less. I will work to reflect our shared Idaho values and aspirations. This means making all decisions through one lens, the lens of ensuring the best possible opportunity for us, our children, and our grandchildren to remain in Idaho, to thrive and enjoy our unparalleled quality of life. It means good paying jobs and higher incomes with the lightest possible hand of government. It means each Idahoan can achieve the American dream of home ownership. It means providing world-class schools. It means accessible and affordable health care where we address the challenges of mental health and substance abuse. It means protecting and enhancing our outdoor recreation. It means a transportation system that saves time and lives. It means protecting our precious natural resources, especially our water. It means ensuring our state government is more agile, transparent, and responsive. It means investing taxpayer dollars wisely in the most careful and sustainable manner with the best return to our future. It means ensuring state government is fiscally sound, not deferring maintenance today that our children will pay for tomorrow. It means pushing back against federal overreach and delivering Idaho solutions where Idahoans enjoy the liberty of being the masters of their own destiny. It means protecting the Idaho values that define us. And finally, it means all decisions and actions will be based on assuring you, the citizens, have the utmost faith and confidence in our government. At a commencement address some time ago, Teresa and I heard 
Louise McClure, the wife of the late Senator Jim McClure, one of our mentors, state, above all, be ethical in all things. The most sacred duty of elected officials is to uphold the trust citizens have granted us. As your governor, I will work to champion confidence in government. When I took the oath of office, I swore to faithfully discharge my duties, to work for all Idahoans, and with God's help, I will. Even more than our majestic landscapes and abundant resources, Idaho's greatest asset is our children. Like generations of Idahoans before me, I pledge with your help to fulfill our promises to them. God bless Idaho. God bless America. God bless our children and grandchildren, our future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor Little. Please be seated. Senator Cherie Buckner Webb will now sing America the Beautiful. Thank you, Senator Buckner Webb. At this time, I would like to take a moment to recognize and thank the Idaho National Guard Joint Color Guard, the Idaho National Guard 25th Army Band, and all of the volunteers and public servants whose contributions have made today's ceremony possible. If you would please stand for the benediction given by Pastor Monty Ralston and then remain standing for the retiring of the national and state colors and the departure of the official party. Will you bow with me in prayer? Father God, we thank you for the proceedings that have taken place here today. We give you thanks for the privilege it is to live in a country where there can be such a smooth transfer of administrations made publicly before its citizens. We're grateful for the inauguration of our governor, Brad Little, as he has pledged to the people of Idaho that he will lead with integrity of heart and uphold the Constitution of the state and the United States. We pray your blessing on him and our First Lady, Teresa Little. For the demands they will face, along with the highs and lows of daily living, we ask that you will grant them the wisdom and the discernment of your Holy Spirit in all things. May they prosper and be in good health, even as their soul prospers. Now we ask that you would also bless all the constitutional offers sworn in today. 
for each of them and their families. We pray that you would help them to find a place of balance between their public and private lives. As today is the start of a new administration for the state of Idaho, we ask for your continued presence with those who have been chosen to lead departments and those who will work with them to further the causes they are charged with. We express our gratitude for all who have participated and labored in any way to make this a memorable day, and for all of those who provided and continue to provide for the safety of Idahoans wherever they live. For all the citizens of Idaho, may we each experience your peace that passes all understanding, and we ask that you guard our hearts and minds in the days to come. Now, for all those present here today and those who are watching from far away, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal comfort and a wonderful hope, comfort you and strengthen your hearts in every good thing you do and say. We ask all these things with gratitude in Jesus' name. Amen. Retire the colors. Color guard. Attention. Present. Oh. The public is now invited to congratulate the governor and the first lady in the governor's office. On behalf of Governor Little and all of your elected officials, this concludes the State of Idaho's 48th inaugural ceremony. Thank you for attending.